So, welcome back to another video. This time it's Popper again. And what you're seeing here is the first match of a PDC league on the Popper uh, home base server. Popper EDH home base server. And yeah, there were some requests on on this gameplay. I played my first round, as you see, with Dago and Rograk against Loyal Apprentice. Probably the reddest matchup you can get in this format. Mm, Loyal Apprentice is one of the most popular tier 1 decks or maybe even tier 0. Red deck wins in general is very very strong and popper. As there's a lot of card pool and yeah, Loyal Apprentice is quite a strong commander on its own since the lieutenant trigger comes with itself and you can create a bunch of top tiers out of nowhere and I was thinking about um, yeah partners are still playable here in Pauper the the way they're meant to be mm, it's important to note that we're playing with 25 HP there's also commander damage so if I get to hit three times in a row with Dargo I can already win a game but uh, I, I looked up the partner combinations since Commander Legends brought up some uncommon partners. I thought this one here could be a, a nice combination since I was playing this deck in Dual Commander back in the days. Of course there are some tweaks to the list, more powerful cards. Mm, but overall I, I really like the, the style of the deck. and. If you look at the transfer to Pauper EDH, there isn't really much to to cut from the list. Like I think there were like 80% of the list I could just copy from, from Dual Commander. That's what I did. And I added some two mana artifacts that replaced themselves on ETB. So the, the basic game plan is to <clears throat> drop some early creatures and get down Dagras as fast as possible and later on if you have to recast him or play with your other cards that synergize with artifacts or sacrificing artifacts or creatures or whatsoever um, you you basically get your types on board but don't get out of cards which is quite important even in Pauper EDH so it's it is about mana advantage but card advantage is much more important since the card quality in Pauper is obviously worse and that's why you need to take care of that the list I've posted in the description is my current one there are some changes from Battle of Baldur's Gate mm. And yeah, so here we are in the first round. It was quite a tough game. Uh, Virox managed to kill my Dargo once already. And my plan here is to cast Tentative Connection on Loyal Apprentice. Because Rogak has Menace, so it only costs one, which is quite a nice one. So I can attack once with Apprentice and a top there and then I can sacrifice his apprentice into my Dargo which is quite a cool interaction I guess a different kind of removal overall that was a very grindy matchup as I remember it was a lot of back and forth and either even if it looks like the red egg wins player has to invest so many resources in order to get rid of Dargo due to the apprentice which basically brings back power with the top the tokens it's not really that big of a deal um, but we will see that in the following minutes so as I said I'm, I'm casting Dargo and yet I kept my galvanic blast in hand because yeah, getting Metalcraft is quite easy, 
with all the all the artifacts that I play. So at some point it might even deal four damage. I can choose between blasting him or maybe roasting a small creature. Yeah, and he follows up with a Voldaren Epicure. At that time, I didn't play that card. I should have done it. I'm sorry. When I recorded the video, I forgot to show the cards on the on the right side. You always have to hove over with the cursor in order to show the cards. So this one on ETB drops a blood token, and I think when it dies, it deals one damage to target opponent. And he follows up with a Goblin Bushwhacker, which is kicked. So all the creatures get plus one, plus zero, and haste. And it's quite a nice swing. And yeah, obviously, he's tapped out, so I decide to block one. I still get six damage. But I don't have to be afraid of any bolt or shock. No, it, ha it has to be sh a bolt, actually in order to to kill Dargo and if it's if it's getting really tricky I still have that galvanic blast I can get rid of a creature as I said before he deals combat damage but right now it looks good the main reason to to keep galvanic blast in hand is obviously to prevent Lord of Apprentice from bringing more tokens to the battlefield and now he actually decided to sacrifice two mountains to kill Dargo, which is probably a, a fun decision because I'm down to two cards and chances of me getting back Dargo, which costs 11 now. So I would have to sacrifice at least three artifacts to naturally cast him now or creatures. I mean, I have the Skirk Prospector, I have the Top Tier token, which is fine. Yeah, there's nothing else I can do apart from playing Rograk and getting another swing next turn. I have to take the chance and attack back. So at that point I'm, I'm planning to play Dargo next turn again. It also depends on what I draw. But I still have the Galvanic Blast up. Now it's not that relevant anymore to roast his apprentice since yeah he's completely out of range recasting him or her and he discarded the goblin heel cutter with the blood token or by sacrificing the blood token and drew a second land. And I take the damage because I need Rogog for the sacrifice. Unfortunately, it's it's a Kobold and not a Goblin. Otherwise, I could have sacrificed him into the Skirk Prospector. But I think it's already fine. And I drew a Thomas Crypt, which is yeah, which is quite nice. You take it. Attack. He's not able to block. That's free damage because these creatures are sacrificed anyways. But I even think I kept the top turn board. I'm not sure anymore. It's quite some time ago already. Yeah, so you just play the, the Torment script now. And exile his graveyard. I think he... Yeah, he had one card that was working from graveyard. It's uh, producing Satyr tokens for escape. So took care of that one. And now I'm about to cast Dargo, and since I have two more mana left, I decided to keep the top two tokens since that one is flying and just pay for it. And now there's a question I, I don't know what's in his hand. At that point, it's a land that's lucky for me. Hmm. Next turn, 
would me bring down to five if I do not block any creature. And yeah, if he has a bolt or shock now, or draws a bolt next turn, uh, it's already lethal, so quite a tough one. He has a collateral damage, it's not bad, but it's not enough either. So I think he attacked and then I decided to kill one of his creatures. Which is which is brilliant with the collateral damage. Like you can just sacrifice it in response, dodge my interaction and use his creature for the spell. So technically Yeah, I'm I'm down to five, now I'm down to three. I was I was very scared of Um, of a bolt. That's why I decided to roast the creature and go down to four. You could have also said, yeah, I could have I could have taken the risk. I draw a reckless charge, so Dargo is a 10-10 and then I attack for lethal. Could have also taken the risk and it would have been lethal with my Galvanic Blast in hand, but didn't want to do that for obvious reasons. So that's the second round and my starting hand is not really promising so I decided to take a mulligan here and the second one looks much better. I want to I want to try to bring down Dargo as soon as possible especially in this matchup. As we've seen in the first game he needs to spend quite some resources in order to get rid of him which grants me time. It's, it really depends on the matchup, because blue matchups, for example, or black matchups most often play efficient uh, interaction, uh, spot removal, uh, stuff like Doomblade or, I don't know, Edicts. This this deck can dodge Edicts with, with the Kobolds and stuff and cheap creatures. That's not that big of a deal, but um, against blue you have bounce effects. Something like Into the Royal and uh, Blink of an Eye. So these these things are much more difficult. Usually in these matchups you need to try to pressure outside of playing Dargo or assembling more than just Dar Dargo, which is which is not always easy. And my my build, to be honest, is uh, or my 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 deck is built in a way that tries to tries to enable the dagger as, as early as possible. So um, it's probably a downside here. Um, I was just checking he yeah he played two bolts on on Dargo, which is quite a good one because he has something on board while I do not. And I can play Rogak and activate Forge of Heroes. Uh, this one says if uh, my commander entered the battlefield, if it's a Planeswalker, you add a loyalty counter. If it's a creature, you add a plus one, plus one counter. And then I had a Springleaf Drum to cast a Golden Egg and draw another card. Unfortunately, I was unable to use Fling to respond on his second bolt and now he's in a very good position he could cast loyal apprentice already have a top tier yeah and my start my my start is a bit slow here i can in order to bring back dargo i would have to sacrifice drum rogak and the egg uh, dragon breath gives haste and for red mana I can boost the creature. So the perfect set setup would be to cast Dargo and the Dragon Breath, but that's not possible. 
since I have to sacrifice everything as I just said. And yeah, I decide to leave the forge open and give it another plus one plus one counter, which might be relevant. I would not expect him to have a second bolt, but keep in mind I just block one of his creatures and then he just just needs to deal five damage to Dargor again and still has a, a board I haven't dealt with at that point. So that's yeah, that makes it quite difficult. Also, fling is uh, when we started the tournament. I since I didn't, I don't really play multiplayer uh, EDH, and I wasn't aware of the fact that only combat damage counts as commando damage. Would have been super cool if fling would count towards commando damage as well, but that's not the case. Uh, it seems that he does not have another bolt and a shock or he just don't want to sacrifice the apprentice and he plays another creature has even more creatures on board and it's getting quite difficult for me I can play my mountain now and I can also play my dragon breath and attack with Dargo leaving my fling open, but once he gets to destroy the card, I'm I'm in a very bad position to be honest, because he would cost 11 again, and I have almost no setup to bring him back. Depending on my next draw, but wouldn't do a lot. Since he he gained two life from the radiant fountain. So my hope right now is that I somehow survive next turn if he attacks with all the creatures. And yeah, I I pumped Dargo so he gets 10 damage. And my hope was to do the same thing next turn. But he drew a fire blast again, which is pretty good for him. Mm, could have dealt 10 damage or depending on the blockers uh, again next turn or let's say 7 and then I would have still yeah he deals enough damage to just fire blast me right away that was a great top take otherwise I would have had a 10 power Dargo next turn <clears throat> dealt 10 damage and then Deal the rest of the damage with fling, but that was not possible. So let's go over to the third game. I have to mulligan down to six again. But this hand looks fine to me. A sting courier is okay in this matchup. There are some some matchups in which it's quite good. Here it's not really that good, but it's fine. I again I have a turn one Dargo. I'm on the play. I have a Mountain, the shield, and the poultice, as well as my cobalt. So that's not too bad. Really put him under pressure. He kept a one lander. So I do not expect to get rid of Dargo in the first round or in the first turn. And he was a bit confused because I used my cobalt, obviously. Oh no, because of the mulligan, never mind. Yeah, and there's a, a jackal pup. Reckless abandon, chain lightning shock, a lot of damage in hand. Haster. Jackal pup is is a one drop you play, but it's obviously not the best. Um I think later on there was a situation in which I bolted the pup and in this case you have a 2 for 1 because you bolt your opponent as well. Jackal pup says it gets as much damage. You get as much damage as the pup itself. So I have a spare supplies, draw another card. And this is more or less the situation I was talking about, or that, that's like 
<clears throat> that's what I had in mind when playing these artifacts. Like, if you manage to keep up your board state, you just drop your artifacts, make sure later in the game you have your types to recast Argo if, if necessary, but you still draw some cards. And yeah, let's see. Um, Battle of Baldur's Gate definitely brought more value to the deck. It might shift in a different direction. I, I haven't played many or I I'm not even sure if I played any matches against controlish archetypes, uh, stuff like Strix or Spectre or whatsoever. That might change my decision making. So there's a swing from the pup. He was unlucky and didn't hit a second land. And I have a pirate spell bomb. I can bounce the jackal pup. I cannot pay the mana for, for echo next turn, but I can delay the whole situation. And now he has the rift bolt and we see the shock in hand so he can shock Dago once. Luckily I played the Stinkerger, so next turn I won't pay Echo, sacrificing a creature which reduces attacks. And I can cast my Cobalt in hand, sacrifice that, maybe even the Pirate Spell Bomb. I can also, I can also sacrifice the Spare Supplies to draw another card. Um, it, it draws one card, enters tapped on ETB, and then you can sacrifice it for two, draw another card. I can sacrifice the Pirate Spell Bomb to deal two damage to him, and play my Kobold, and then I still have one mana left to cast Argo, since, yeah. Not sure if that was the, the route I went for. But yeah, at that point it's, it's already very difficult for... I think I, I've kept my spare supplies. Yeah, that, that way it's fine as well. Um, it's already difficult for the apprentice player. Since he missed so many land drops. And there's a second land drop that helps a bit. But he's at 9 HP and... Yeah, playing a, an apprentice now and making a top third doesn't really do a lot. I think he replayed the pup and kept open. Or even a ginger brood as well. I'm not I'm not sure anymore. But it's definitely not looking good for him. It's debatable if you would have kept the, the hand. If you're on a play, uh, usually you can do that. I mean, the, the Apprentice deck is very efficient, plays quite a low curve. You have two draws to find your land. Of course, you can't manipulate your top cards in any way, but you can do that. Especially because his hand was quite stuffed with CMC1 slots, so as long as you can do something with your mana, it's fine. But you can also argue that against Dargo, you have to have an answer in a reasonable, reasonable amount of time. And yeah, he decided to, even that low on land, he decided to cast the Lavada twice and Sacrifice a mountain in order to get rid of Dargo again. All I can do is cast another Rograk. I keep my net on hand to not give him any information about how far I am away from casting Dargo. There's a Jackal Pup. And I have a Mock War Marshal, which is quite a good card. Makes a token on ETB. Has echo, makes a token on 
LTB. There's a goblin. And yeah, now it's it's already not very attractive to to attack with the pup, especially because the spider silk net just gives plus two plus zero and reach. And I decided to attach it. Why not? In order to block the pup and not even getting rid of my war marshal. Now I have to sacrifice it to to the echo costs and. A collateral damage is not bad either. So now I can, for example, sacrifice Rogark, deal three damage to the pup, get rid of it, and at the same time deal three damage to to Virox. So it's basically for in this situation for one mana, it's a it's a searing blaze without landfall trigger, which is quite fine. So yeah, what to do here? Sacrifice, spare supplies, drawing a card. I already have one sacrifice trigger from the Mock War Marshal. And then I can sacrifice Rogak to the collateral damage. I attack first. Mm, I only attack with one goblin. Right now I'm not sure why I didn't attack with both. Because I could have still sacrificed one of them. I think I need another. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't really matter. So, as I said, drawing a card here for an alchemist's vial. I've, I'm at three. Oh, it costs already eleven. I don't need to sacrifice that many. I think I miscalculated something here. Did I? One, two, three, four, five, eleven. No, that's right. Okay. And another Dargo on board. And it doesn't look good for my opponent since he drew land and there's nothing to deal with Dargo. Uh, he would have to drop another creature. Uh, I think he can play the, the Daybreak Combatants. And then he blocks at least two damage going down to one ah oh, he even he casted loyal apprentice right was that way that's that's fine as well going for combat to get the top there and now i have the alchemist vial and that's quite a cool one because Usually the, the ability doesn't matter, but I can sacrifice it and it says target creature can't attack or block. I target the top of the token, so he's forced to block with the Ginger Brute and Loyal Apprentice. Uh, the thing is that Ginger Brute can produce a food token, I act as a food token and I want to prevent that. And now he goes down to one. And... Yeah, even if he gets rid of Dargo next turn, I can replay Rogak. Mm. No, never mind. Rogak costs costs six at that point, so that's already GG. GG GG GG. Uh yeah. Good. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh this time with, with my commentary. Last time people uh, not complained about, but they wanted me to commentate on it, makes it a bit more interactive, which I can understand. Uh, yeah, if you... It's, many people ask me about uh, the overlay in Cockatrice. I can post the link in the description or put it down in the comments. So it makes makes it a bit more appealing, more attractive to play it overall. All right, with that being said, Thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Cheers.